Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 5 was just released and what a treat of an issue. In it, Star Wars fans got to see Boba Fett and Valance duke it out. Hell yeah. So let's break down the issue and dive into Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 5. The issue opens up with a flashback some years ago on the planet Gleon Sam. A young Nakano Lash and her parents have just come out of the ocean to watch the moon rise, but things quickly turn bad and Lash and her parents are attacked by an Anselmi extremist who kills Lash's parents, resulting in her becoming an orphan. We then return to present day and we're back on Nakano Lash's ship, with Boba Fett standing over Ta'anga's dead body. Bummer. I was hoping maybe she would have survived, but Boba Fett murked her ass. With that said, there's some symmetry we're seeing here. Nakano Lash and Cadelia both grew up without their parents, and Boba Fett killed both Ta'angor and Ta'anga. Back to the story, and Lash pleads with Boba Fett to not kill Cadelia, explaining that the young girl could end the war between the Mourner's Whale and the Unbroken Clan, but Boba Fett doesn't care. Before Fett can harm Lash and Cadelia, however, However, Valance comes between them and the infamous bounty hunter and tries slugging Boba Fett. Valance tells Boba Fett he has a code against killing a fellow bounty hunter, but isn't opposed to hurting one and slams Fett against a wall. Fett then unleashes spikes from his boot, calls Valance a droid, and kicks Valance in the face. Angered by being called a droid, Valance charges his hand cannon and blasts Boba Fett, launching him backwards. Fett then uses his jetpack to thrust himself upwards, uppercutting Valance into the High Republic before entangling Valance in a bioenergy disruptor and shocking him. Meanwhile, Lash is trying to convince Cadelia to jettison from the ship in an escape pod, but Cadelia protests and tells Lash she can fight and protect the Nautilin. Lash explains to Cadelia that she has a greater fight ahead of her and to not mourn the fact that the Nautilin is knocking on death's door. With Valance incapacitated, Boba Fett moves in to deal the final blow against Nakano Lash, telling the Nautilin she deserves to die for what she did on Corellia all those years ago. We then get a flashback to Corellia on the day where everything went belly up. We see Ta'angor tell the crew of bounty hunters that Nakano Lash just killed their client, and Boba Fett remarks to Valance that his mentor just got all of them killed. Boba Fett at this point is set on making Lash pay for her actions, but Valance doesn't want any harm to come to his mentor. As Boba Fett goes to shoot Lash, Valance pushes him and Fett's blaster bolt instead hits Ta'angor. Called it guys. Infuriated, Boba Fett headbutts Valance and leaves the cybernetically enhanced bounty hunter to be captured by the Unbroken Clan. As this is happening, happening, Lash is helping Corinthia escape and the pregnant woman is beside herself with everything that's just transpired, while Lash apologizes to Valance for leaving him to be captured by the Unbroken Clan. Now in the custody of the brutal crime syndicate, Valance is being interrogated by General Vakura, who wants to know why he and his crew broke into their compound. Valance tells her everything he knows, which is just that he and the crew of bounty hunters were hired to break into the Unbroken Clan sanctuary and weren't given any other info on what the purpose of their mission was. We then fast forward to present day and General Vakura and Unbroken Clan operatives are in the Rusan system, making their way to Lash, her ship, Valance, Boba Fett, and Cadelia. General Vakura is set on killing Valance, his mentor, and Cadelia, regardless of whether or not Cadelia is truly the daughter of Corinthia. Back aboard Nakano Lash's ship, Boba Fett is doing his best to kill the Nautilin, resulting in Cadelia being cut off from the escape pod. Lash tells Cadelia she'll need to board the Broken Wing to escape before Boba Fett Fett closes in on them and stabs Lash in the shoulder. As Fett moves in for the killing blow, Valance stops them, but Boba Fett uses his flamethrower on Valance, roasting his ass, before setting his sights back on Lash. However, General Vakura closes in on them, attacks Lash's ship, and scores a direct hit on the ship's reactors, immobilizing and tearing the ship apart. As Vakura presses her attack, Lash winds up encased from the debris of the deteriorating ship, which prompts Boba Fett to hightail it without administering the killing blow on his quarry. Valance tries his best to help Lash escape, but to no avail. Knowing her fate is sealed, Lash tells Valance her time is up, and a defeated Valance tells his mentor he wanted to save her just as she had saved him all those years ago, which prompts Lash to tell her protege that he's more human than anyone she's ever met. I swear I'm not crying guys, it's just someone chopping onions. Lash tasks Valance with protecting Cadelia, and the two say their goodbyes as he makes his way to the Broken Wing and his new ward. Once on his ship, Valance tells Cadelia Lash is dead and the two set 
get off. Meanwhile, General Vakura tells her subordinate that she'll do whatever it takes to hunt them down as she won't allow Cadelia to jeopardize all she's built. As Cadelia and Valance make their escape, Valance tells her that he promises to take her somewhere safe, stating he knows someone that could help them, someone he hasn't seen in a long time, as he holds a red gem in his hand. And that's where the issue ends. First, let's talk about that gem, which is a callback to the comic series Target Vader Down. At the end of that series, on the planet Loic, Valance gave that same gem to his love Eula after she had originally given it to him for good luck. Apparently, at some point, Valance got that gem back from Eula, but it appears that he'll be taking Cadelia to Loic and Eula for protection. Additionally, I have to admit I rather enjoyed Boba Fett nearly killing Valance and Lash. As a youngling, Boba Fett was one of those characters I loved because of how cool he looked. Once I got older, however, I found him to be such a disappointment in the original trilogy, so it's dope to see him being ruthless and an absolute beast. In regards to Ta'anga, it's definitely a bummer she got murked so easily and quickly. I hoped that maybe she would have survived, but that didn't happen. As I mentioned in my video on the previous issue, I knew that it would be revealed that Boba Fett killed her twin brother Ta'angor, which I do kind of like. As much as it would have been cool for Ta'anga to live, I kind of like the idea that Boba Fett was the person behind the demise of the two siblings. Lastly, I think this panel here might be showing us that Nakano Lash got to an escape pod and made it off of her ship in time, so we'll have to wait and see if that's the case. The cover for Bounty Hunters number 6 shows Valance encountering Forlom and Zuckus, who both first appeared in the famous Bounty Hunter scene in The Empire Strikes Back, so it appears that things are going to pop off next issue. But what do you guys think about Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 5? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.